Here's our agenda. We would like to uh, introduce a new method of model search uh, or model preselection in data streams uh, or data clouds. Uh, the key technical tool will be uh, density-based probability distances, uh, generalizations of uh, relative entropy uh, with scaling. Okay. Uh, so this this scaling gives much flexibility for interdisciplinary situation-based applications. You can include cost functions, utility, whatever you like. You can also handle in a very nice way outliers uh, and inliers, uh, although we don't have time today to, to talk uh, about this too much. Um, also, uh, I'll show you some asymptotic distribution of the concerning uh, distances, and we also show you a computer 3T implementation. Okay. So, yeah. so distances uh, between two probability uh, measures need not be probability measures but for today. Uh, they play a very prominent role in, in statistics, namely they can be used for uh, getting uh, estimators, for testing goodness of fit, testing independence, can be used for clustering, can be used for change point detection, can be used for patient decision procedures, and on and on. And of course, not only limited to statistics, but also to other fields of research like information theory, signal processing, pattern recognition, feature extraction, machine learning, etc., etc. And I think this very nice conference here contributes very much to this interdisciplinary point of view. Okay. Uh, so suppose we want to describe the proximity or distance between uh, two probability distributions. So they either may be two theoretical distributions. For instance, you can measure the distance between two normal distributions with different parameters. Uh, or there can be two distributions which represent the data. So they are data-derived distributions. Okay, so they come maybe from, from histograms, frequencies, or uh, one is a, um, uh, is a, a data-derived distribution and the other one is a theoretical distribution, and this uh, point of view we will take today, okay? Good, so uh, about the generality, P and Q may live on, on any, any space. You know, there might be RD, but there might be also space of functions, uh, so you can do it also for uh, measuring the distance between two solutions of stochastic differential equations, for instance. You can do it for functional data analysis, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, uh, for instance, uh, a very simple example is the following. Suppose here we have the space of all probability distributions, and then you have some data x1 to xn of sample size n, okay? And then from this you build a probability distribution, okay? So, uh, so. Okay. And uh, yes, and here you have a, a, a cloud of candidate models for the distribution where the data come from. Okay, there may be uh, a parametric for today, but there also may be a non-parametric, okay? And then you measure, uh, you, you want to find the distribution which is closest in distance to your data-derived distribution, okay? It's a very simple idea, okay? For instance, and of course, of interest is the corresponding parameter that's called the minimum distance estimator, and of course, also the distances of in interest. For instance, take uh, an IID sample, then you just have the empirical distribution here, okay? So you put weight 1 over n uh, to each data point, and then you found, want to find the distribution which is closest. Yeah? So actually, you, you, you have all done this, maybe without knowing, because if you take as a distance the kalberg leibler information divergence or the relative entropy, uh, then you end up uh, that the minimum distance estimator is nothing else but the maximum likelihood estimator. So maximum likelihood estimation is always a special case, a special, special, special case of our context, okay? So, but then uh, after you've done this, still of interest is how large is this smallest distance, because if it's large, 
then it's a bad goodness of fit. You, you searched in the wrong data cloud. Okay? So you can do a actually synchronously uh, parameter estimation and goodness of fit in one go. That's very nice. Okay? So, but of course in time series we don't have IID data. Yeah? Uh, they are dependent, but let's have a look at the IR2 model. Okay? Then uh, we have some, we can rewrite it in this way. On the right hand side we isolate the noise. Okay? So we have a, a parameter vector here consisting basically of the two, two weights, C1 and C2. Okay, and the left hand side we could rewrite in terms of the backshift operator as we know. Okay, and then what you do, of course, it, it should be an IID noise. This transformed series should be an IID noise. So now you take the empirical distribution of the transformed series. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that means you take this relative, uh, the, the frequencies. Vehicle distribution means you have these obvious relative frequencies, okay? So far, so good, okay? So, uh, putting that into a picture uh, means, okay, here uh, our data-derived distribution also corresponds on a, a space parameter, gamma, okay? And uh, say we have found a good gamma, then you can uh, do this optimization problem, okay? Find the best distribution for the, the corresponding noise, okay? Uh, but then, of course, if you have a different gamma, you get a different solution and a different parameter estimator. So uh, here you face an additional task to find a good gamma. For instance, you can do Groot uh, ordinarily square, okay? So, Two issues, so which time series model can we use and which distances can we use, okay? So about the time series models, of course, we want to go beyond R2. So let's make it very, very general, nonlinear auto recursions, okay? So we write down, so we have a, a family of functions indexed by a parameter, okay? Gamma, which can also depend on time, so to speak. Then you have all the data here. K is the starting point, okay? Maybe minus infinity, but may not, okay? Then you have also independent data, independent variables, okay? And uh, yeah, that's it. And this should be, this transformation should give an IID noise. That's it. So of course, uh, to be more, more specific, of course, this is a special case. If your M plus one data point can be written as an outer function of the IID noise and the rest, okay? Typically, of course, this outer function is additive, but it may be all the multiplicative or whatever you like, okay? The, the, the principle I show you uh, applies to all of these contexts, yeah? So, uh, a very wide model class is, uh, which is covered by this context is the Nonlinear autoregressive models with at exogenous input, the NAX models, okay? Uh, you know, th but then the parameter is constant in time, okay? And uh, one, of course, has additive G, auto function, okay? Uh, then, of course, special cases of that are nonlinear regressions, not autoregressions, but ordinary regressions, so they are also covered, okay? And of course, the uh, uh, um, AR models, ARIMA models, SARIMA models, whatever you like. They're all covered by this context. So, um, now recall, uh, we have two measures, uh, two probability distribution. The one is, uh, for instance, the empirical distribution of the IID noises, okay, of the transformed series, okay. And the other one is a candidate for the true distribution of the IIT noise, okay? P and Q. So now we want to measure the distance between, so how to measure it? We all know some, some special cases, of course, relative entropy or kalbach leibler the same name. Recall, the maximum distance estimation is maximum likelihood. Maximum likelihood is always covered, okay? Another distance, of course, all of you know is the Pearson chi squared typically used for goodness of fit, okay? Yeah, then a Hellinger distance is also well known. They can be covered by a more general class of Jesus F divergences, but we will be much more general than that, okay? Uh, also, pragma distances uh, are covered uh, 
by our context. We are much more general. The idea, the idea is the, not only to have one distance, but a family of distances. Yeah? Not only measure once, on a, uh, but uh, more often. And the flexibility is reflected by a generator, phi, and a scaling measure, m. Okay? For instance, it should cover robustness issues, which is very, very important. Uh, and we can do that in a very, a, a very nice structured way. Um, okay, that's how it works. So we want to measure the distance between P and Q, okay? And we suppose that they have a density, uh, maybe the frequency if the reference measure is the counting measure or the classical densities, yeah? Okay. Uh, and we have a scaling measure which need not be a probability measure, not be total mass one, but arbitrary in a sense, and it also has a, a density, uh, and I always use uh, small letters for those, okay? And this generating function should be twice differentiable and strictly convex. Yeah? And then, uh, well, actually, uh, a few years ago, uh, for instance, in IEEE transactions, the information theory, we introduced the scaled Bregman divergences or scaled Bregman distances. Here is the, the formula. Uh, maybe it's quite nasty. I'll show you a, a picture in a moment. A very special case is a weighted Pearson chi squared. If you here would write Q, the second density, then you would end up as Pearson chi squared. If you write here the first density, you end up with Neumann here squared. But that's a special, special, special case. Okay? Uh, today I want to. Em uh, I, I, I we make the special case that the scaling density is a function, which we call scale connector, between the two densities uh, at stake. Yeah? And, but uh, W can be very general, uh, more or less as general as you want. Even for asymptotics, we get a completely general res result for that, which was very amazing. So here, here's the picture. That's how this distan distance works. So here we have the states, yeah? And then we have the two densities, say frequencies at stake. Yeah? What you do is you weight uh, each of them, yeah? Or you scale them, each of them. And then you end up at two different points. And then what you do is you have this generator function. For instance, here is this uh, squared function, okay? It's strictly convex, of course. Uh, and then what you do is you, here at this point, you take the tangent line and you measure the difference at the other point. Okay? That's what you do. Then you risk, then you scale again, rescale again. But this is nonlinear, of course. Then you sum up things over all states, okay? And then you end up with your well, non negative value, okay? So now what, what you do is that you not only take one generator function, but a whole family of generator functions indexed by an index alpha. And the weight is also a family of weights uh, or scales uh, indexed by a beta. So what you have is a, a, a plot, a score, a score uh, plot, which, uh, where you have alpha, beta, and the distance. So you measure a whole family of distances, and the idea, for instance, with minimum distance estimation is find a parameter where the whole mountains, the whole surface is close to zero. Not only in one distance, but in many distances, so the whole mountains should be close to zero. Okay? That's the idea. And it can be also very nicely graphically uh, represented, and I hand over to my co-author, Annalena. Thank you. So, for the special form of our scaling measure, we can cover many well-known distances or divergences. For example, the one scalar scaling leads to the uh, classical Bregman distances, including the density power divergences of Basu, and by using the power functions as generator and, as a special case, the kullback leibler divergence by tending alpha to towards one. We focused on the scaling by weighted auth power means. So our function w depends on two parameters, beta and r. And with this 
scaling, we cover, for example, all GSR V or F divergences, and among these, the Pearson's chi square divergence. Also, the Neyman's chi square divergence is, can be constructed, the blended weight chi square divergence by Lindsay, some scaled Bregman power divergences when we choose the power functions as generators or the blended weight Hellinger distance as well. So today we will work with the geometric mean scaling. We get it by letting run r versus zero and yeah, get this geometric mean scaling. Here you can see this geometric mean scaling as well as this R power mean leads to the Chisa divergence. These are two other examples of these R mean scalings. So of course, in general, we are not restricted on the earth power means. You can use, for example, the weighted exponential mean. You can see it here. Or you can design whatever you want. Here in the second row, we constructed a scaling which covers some robustness issues. So this corner, respectively, this corner um, relates on outliers. So, the, to obtain robustness or asymptotic efficiency is a question of the good choice of our scale connector, but this topic was treated in another paper or talk where we developed a 3D computer graphical geometric method called adjustment, density pair adjustment function. So, at this point, we knew what, which time series model and which distance is to be used, but it remains to estimate the parameters gamma and theta. The basic idea behind this is that under the true model f gamma zero and q theta zero, we get that the sequence of the residuals behaves like a um, size n sample from an IID sequence under the distribution q theta zero, and so the um, empirical distribution of the residuals tends versus the true distribution by increasing sample size. And thus our distances converge versus zeros, zero for a very broad family of distances, but here we used our scaled Bregman distances for an alpha family of generators and a beta family of scale connectors. Today, these are the above mentioned power function Respective, respectively, the geometric mean scaling. So, from this idea, we can introduce the algorithm of universal model search by probability distance. After having chosen f from a principal parametric function family class and some prefix class of parametric candidate distribution q theta, we can find a parameter sequence gamma and theta, so that such that our distance, our scaled Bregman distance, is approximately zero for large enough sample size and for all alpha and beta. We pre-select this model, f, gamma, and q theta, if the 3D score surface s is smaller than some appropriate chosen threshold t, which will be some kind of chi square con quantile, as we will see later. Here you can see an example from for the 3D score surface S. And the advantage of our UMSPD is that after the pre-selection process, we can use the same distance, scale Bregman distance D, in order to perform a statistical inf sound inference in terms of simultaneous exact parameter estimation and goodness of fit. So the only issue 
which remains to be discussed is the choice of the threshold T. For our special choices of the generator as power function and our scale, scaling connector as geometric scale, we, the following theorem will help us to solve this task. For a finite discrete distribution Q theta zero, we have that for uh, increasing sample size and tending to infinity, of course, the scaled Bregman distance tends to, uh, to zero, yes, but the product of two times the sample size and the scaled Bregman distance tends in distribution to a chi square distribution. So we can derive the threshold T as in terms of the corresponding chi square um, quantiles. So, apart from the UMSPD, we can use the scaled Bregman distances for robust statistical inferences with completely general asymptotic results for other choices of phi and w, as well as for change detection in data streams. Then we can do Bayesian decision making decision making, sorry, with important processes. And furthermore, we have explicit formulae for the scaled Bregman power divergences where all three measures stem from the same arbitrary exponential family. So I'm at the end of our talk. I may summarize, we introduced a new method for model search in data stream clouds which gives much flexibility for interdisciplinary situation-based applications. Then we gave a new parameter-free asymptotic distribution results, and we outlined a corresponding information geometric 3D computer graphical selection procedure. Thank you. Well, for instance, uh, if you uh, well, if you sample, for instance, from a binomial distribution, whatever, yes, and you want to find out just graphically the best minimum distance estimator, and you would not know what the real say if if she would put in the parameter, and I would not know, it would take me less than uh, well a minute to find out just graphically by interacting. Because, you know, whenever you have a different parameter, the mountains will raise or fall or bend or something like that. And it would take me maybe half a minute to find out the parameter within a precision uh, which is more or less the same, the maximum likelihood estimation. Because at the end, one, po one point, and by accident it's one line, uh, I would have to explain a little more. One point and this surface, and actually one line, namely the one in the middle, corresponds to maximum likelihood estimation. All the rest, one point in this um, uh, uh, graphics in these mountains correspond to Pearson chi squared minimum distance estimation. Just one point, we have the whole mountains. And you know, if you change the parameter, of course, the, the mountains rise or fall, uh, depending on whether you come close to the true unknown parameter or not. And this is pretty fast and you know, the precision is really good, and f astonishingly, it also works very well already for small sample sizes. Yeah, but for, for time series, it's, uh, it depends. You know, for our two models, you have just two parameters, no problem. Even for long-term memory, it's even simpler because then you have one parameter, in fact. It's very simple, so it can be done really fast. More, more studies, of course, uh, will present in another talk. Uh, so it's really very efficient computationally. 